It seems that whenever Formula One has a wet race, there are a few procedures that have to be worked out. This year's Singapore Grand Prix had Spa 2021 written all over it, or at least the potential to have Spa 2021 written all over it, as the race was delayed by about an hour so that they could wait for the track to dry out a little bit. So cue the whining on Twitter about just start the race, just do this, just do that. The races back in the old days would have started, there were real drivers back there not whining babies and so on and so forth with some forgetting that the 1997 Belgian Grand Prix had started behind the safety car, and the 2007 Japanese Grand Prix clip doing the rounds online started after about 19 laps of tootling around behind the safety car too. Oh, and there's also Canada 2011. So this then led to a lot of people suggesting that F1 doesn't even need the wet tyre because they're only ever going to run in things up to intermediate conditions anyway, and that drivers have lost their bottle when it comes to racing in the wet. But there are other reasons beyond... Yeah, it's too wet, let's not bother. So for this, we need to look at the construction of the different tyres in use by Formula One. Obviously, we have the slick tyres, solid round blocks of rubber that provide optimal grip in the dry because you've got a solid piece of rubber in contact with the road. For a time, these tyres had four grooves cut in them to reduce the contact patch and therefore reduce grip, but they returned to these four slicks in 2009 after bringing a groove tyre in for 1998. Now just to clarify, in 1998 the tyres had three grooves in the front and four in the rear, before becoming four and four in 1999. So then, while running in the dry, it's you know dry tyres all day every day, but as soon as you try to run dry tyres in wet conditions, you're going to have a bad time. What happens here is twofold. Number one, the tyre temperatures drop, the tyres become harder, and therefore reduce grip. The second is you run into a potentially dangerous situation of aquaplaning, which basically means the tyre is sitting on top of a pocket of water and is therefore no longer in contact with the tarmac, at which point you might as well be on ice. When the conditions are properly wet, you'll need to whack the wet tyres on. Now the wet tyres are built in a totally different manner to the dries. Firstly, they're made of a softer compound, which means they heat up quicker. They also have deep tread blocks cut into the rubber to help cut through those pockets of water and get onto the actual tarmac to generate heat and therefore grip. The water goes into these grooves cut into the tyre, giving the car an opportunity to get closer to the tarmac, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I wish I could animate this stuff. Which helps a lot during wet weather racing, because the compound is softer, the tyre surface becomes malleable, and those tread blocks can move around, which in turn generates heat. As the track starts to dry, it can generate a bit too much heat, and that's why you'll see the drivers driving off the racing line to find puddles to bring those temperatures down. It's the actual edges of the tread block that bite into the tarmac, and as they get hot, they wear and therefore lose grip. And because they're designed to operate at a much lower temperature than even the softest compound tyres, run these wets on a dry or drying track, and you've had it. However, there is another downside to this. Because the cars are travelling at such high speed and there's a lot of water going into these tread blocks, there's only one place that water can go. Into the air. Although these tyres are designed to try and chuck as much of it out to the side as possible, and you can see the tread is designed with this in mind, trying to shove as much away from the car as possible. Because of the forward rotational speed of the tyres, water is being ejected off the tyre through centrifugal force, with some of it going rearwards as not all of it can be lobbed off to the side of the track. You've probably experienced this at least once in your life. You're in a car, on a motorway, and you're behind a lorry, and the weather is, you know, well, it's pretty British, isn't it? And the wipers just cannot keep up with the amount of spray that's being lobbed off the back of this 42-ton lorry. Now, this is happening at 55, 60 miles an hour on the M6. Now imagine this happening at about 150, 160, 170 miles an hour. And according to Pirelli, these tyres can chuck out over 60 litres of water at 180 miles an hour. That's a lot. And that's 60 litres every second as well. At least that's how it was on the pre-2017 tyres, so that number is probably a lot higher now. So while there is going to be some ejected out to the side, there's still a decent amount of water going into the face of the driver behind. And in Formula 1, the driver behind has no wipers like a GT or a touring car driver does. And we've seen these problems with blinding spray before. The 1998 Belgian Grand Prix springs to mind where half the field was blindsided and then wiped out because David Coulthard dropped his McLaren on a drain cover and nobody could see where they were going. Fast forward later on into that race and then there's another accident, this time involving Schumacher and, well, David Coulthard, in which Schumacher lost one of his wheels. 
fast forward again to last year and you've got drivers saying that they couldn't even see the flashing red light on the car in front of them. Also during that race, the drivers were saying if it was just one person on track it wouldn't be too bad. The grip wasn't the issue. They could drive around for a bit and maybe they displace enough water to get enough of a dry line going and enough water off the track to then be able to go racing. But because of the sheer amount of spray, it was just too dangerous. Lando Norris lost it at the top of Radion and then ended up across the blind crest. A blind crest where two years prior a driver had been killed. In dry weather. So the problem isn't so much F1 being put off by wet weather per se, the problem is just simply the amount of spray and well, blinding spray that's being lobbed out the back of these cars. If the field is quite spread out, like at the end of the Russian Grand Prix last year for example, then yeah, by all means whack on the wet tyres because they're very spread out and there's no danger of being caught up in the spray. But if you take the start of the race, which is, well, the most dangerous part of the race, then nobody can see where they're going and you're just you know, asking for an accident. Or in the case of Canada 2011, where aquaplaning was just unavoidable. Because it's all well and good whining on Twitter about letting them race. But if a driver, spectator or marshal is then hurt, those same people are going to be asking how the hell this was allowed to happen. I mean, okay, in the instance of Jules Bianchi, it was the fact that there was a crane in the gravel trap. That was the main contributing factor. But he aquaplaned off in conditions that more than a few of the drivers had said were not suitable. This is also a race that started behind the safety car, was then stopped for 20 minutes, and then started again after another seven laps behind the safety car. Is there an actual fix for this? I mean, I'm not an engineer, so I really don't know. The problem could be that... You know, the larger tyres shift more water. The problem could be the tyres can't shift enough water out to the site instead of behind. But like I say, you know, I'm not an engineer. It's a tricky one. Unless you are an engineer and can explain a little bit in more detail why it goes more to the rear and not to the sides. But I did find something from Adrian Sutil after that accident in 2014 that later claimed the life of Jules Bianchi. The problem in our cars is when it gets dark you can still see, but we have bright lights on the steering wheel so they're kind of irritating us. We have a very small view from the helmet and then there is this bright light which is normally set up for maximum brightness in let's say sunny conditions, otherwise we can't really see. But in dark conditions it affects the eyesight a lot. In those last laps with all the spray and the drops on the water it was really hard to see. That's why sometimes from the outside it looks drivable, and also from the safety car it looks drivable. They have a big windscreen, but no one knows what it's like for us in the cars, and with these cars which are so difficult to drive right now without grip and a massive amount of power. And I think he's right. For us in our cosy little armchairs at home watching it on TV from the trackside cameras, it might look fine. It's like, oh, it's only a little bit wet, but from their point of view, like with last year at Spa, they couldn't see the red light on the car in front of them. So it might just be a case of stop saying just do this, just do that. We need to take some copium and deal with it. So then a look at why it might not necessarily be the weather, but more the equipment that Formula 1 has to deal with the weather that makes it impossible for them to race in wet weather. If you've learned something here today, then do give the video a like. And for more stuff like this, do get subscribed with that bell on so you never miss out on anything I do here. Massive thanks as ever to the good folk at Patreon for the support and if you want to help pay for some of the images I use in these videos then you're more than welcome to donate via Patreon, a link to which is in the description along with my socials or super thanks underneath this video. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a great day wherever you live in the world and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Bye.